I did one thing. I devanned half the shrimp. Okay. And took the poopy out. Okay. <laughs> and then the, in the other <laughs> ones, I left the poopy in. <laughs> We're basically debating whether or not we can taste the poop. Okay. We are making crispy buttered shrimp with 20 cloves of garlic today. It's like a 20 minute weeknight dinner um, that is more delicious than it should be given how quickly it comes together. Just to walk you through what we need for it, shrimp, these are shell on shrimp. They have not yet been deveined. I'm gonna show you how to devein them later, but you're looking for very large shrimp. These are U15s, I think, which means there's 15 of them in a pound. Garlic. We may need more than this, honestly. There's usually like 12 cloves of garlic in a head and we need 20. So we're gonna bring another garlic into the picture. Lemon, one can of cannellini beans or any white beans, whatever, just a bean. A chickpea would be great too. Unsalted butter, lots of it. And baguette, that's just for serving. Actually, I'm gonna heat the oven because we're gonna warm it up. This is one of those recipes that's all about prep because once we get over to the stove, we're just like, we're sauteing and we're adding some butter and we're flipping the skillet and whatever and it comes together very fast. So we're gonna get ourselves styled out. The first thing we'll wanna do is deal with our shrimp. A lot of you get the heebie-jeebies when I don't devein my shrimp. So I'm gonna show you how to devein them but also keep them in their shell. We are leaving the shrimps in the shells because I think that crispy, buttery shrimp shells are delicious. And so this gives you the option to then just eat the whole thing, shell and all, later on. It also helps prevent the shrimp from overcooking. It's like a protective barrier, so I like to cook things shell on. In order to devein them, you'll just cut right down the spine with a scissor, right until you get to that little tail part, like the part that you see like on shrimp cocktail is still on there and then you can look inside and see if the shrimp made a poopy. And this shrimp made a poopy, so we can go in with paper towel, and we can just pull the poopy out. Fucking gross. You're basically wiping its ass, honestly, it's fucking disgusting. And then you just repeat. Straight up the back, snip, snip, snip. Check for doo-doo, remove doo-doo. You can usually kind of pull it out in a string. Do you taste the difference when you devein them? I don't taste the difference when I devein them, which is why I don't devein them, because frankly, if you can't taste it, then who cares? Should we just not devein a couple of them and see if... Yeah, let's do a out. taste test. Do a blind taste. I love that. Okay, so we're going to devein half of them, and then we're not going to devein the rest, and we're going to see if we can tell the difference. That was a good one, though. It's a little satisfying. Okay, um, just in preparation for this whole situation, we're going to... Rinse and drain one can of cannellini beans. There we go, beans by the stove. Okay, and now we do the slicing of the garlic. That's how you um, crack open a head of garlic. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and we need 20. If you're wondering why there's 20 cloves of garlic in this recipe, I will tell you. When I was a young cook, I used to make a recipe um, from Ina Garden called chicken with 40 cloves of garlic or something along those lines. And it was like one of the first recipes that I learned to cook and would make like anytime anyone came over for dinner. And I was just tickled by the amount of garlic in it and blown away by the fact that it really didn't taste like there was 40 cloves of garlic in it. It was decidedly garlicky. And so I thought to myself like, if Ina Garden can put 40 cloves of garlic in her chicken, then I can put 20 cloves of garlic in my shrimp. It is garlicky, yes, but there is also ample butter in this recipe to balance all the garlic, and there's nothing better in the whole world than garlic butter. So, smash and peel, smash and peel, so you have 20. <coughs> Becky? Yeah. Do you want to help me with something, but you'll have to be on camera. How does that feel to you? <laughs> I need help slicing all of this garlic. Because it's just taking way too fucking long. It's like smash and peel? Um, yep, just like hit them with the side of the knife. Yep. And then it should release easily. Okay, so we're thinly slicing this garlic, but we don't have to be too precious about it. Like, I'm not. <laughs> and he took, wow. That was a right. Becky! You killed that. Okay, thank you so much. 
So that's how you get it done in a timely manner. You bring your friends on board and you all have a garlic slicing party. Like, are these guys okay? <laughs> <laughs> They're like, just like sitting there silently yeah, whispering to each other. Oh my God, the most tender. She's such a tender ween. All right, we are also going to slice half of this lemon and thinly as possible because we're gonna caramelize the lemon in the skillet in the butter and that's gonna like mellow out that bitter lemony flavor and turn it kind of like sweet and caramelized and yummy. It's just a nice way to coax out two different flavors from one ingredient. So half of it we will save for squeezing later on the fresh juice and the other half we're cutting into quarters and we're gonna caramelize them in the skillet so we've got lemons two ways. Baguette going in the oven. We're warming her up. What else do we need to do? We have our butter. Okay, so eight tablespoons of butter. That is one stick. So you'll just wanna cut this butter into a bunch of chunks here. And that will help you to more evenly melt it when it hits the skillet so it doesn't start browning on the outsides and then stay unmelted in the center. Okay, so now that our butter is cut and our garlic is sliced and our lemons are cut and our shrimp is deveined and we drained our beans, we're gonna go over to the stove and we're gonna cook the shit. Big dog! Oh, we. Hi, Big. Big, you're wearing the exact same outfit you were last time, so it's gonna look like this is the same day. Same day. <laughs> but it's not. I was wearing a hat. Oh, really? Yeah. No, I don't think so. Yeah, he was. Nobody grubs harder than Ben. He's literally just sitting there going <laughs> every, yeah. every, yeah, he's just waiting like a monster. I do think I should put an apron on now. So step one in searing shrimp. Pat them dry. Because we want these to cook really quickly. Shrimp have a tendency to overcook. And the drier they are, the faster they're going to caramelize in the skillet. So I'm just patting them dry and I'm waiting to season them until like right before we go into the skillet, which is just about now. And I'm just gonna season them with salt here and then we'll do pepper later on. We're gonna sizzle this shrimp in a bunch of butter and they're gonna get nice and nutty and crispy and golden brown. And then we're gonna add in the garlic and the lemon and the beans and the remaining butter. So you'll see how it all goes down in a second. At the moment, I'm preheating a very large cast iron skillet and I want it to get it pretty hot, so about half the butter going in. Swirl it around. And we're gonna wait till it fully melts to add the shrimp. We're over like medium high heat right now. All right, we got a bunch of shrimp and they're all going in. So we're laying them into the skillet in a single layer because you wanna make sure that all those shells are making contact. And we're just gonna cook them here pretty undisturbed and let the bottom shells like really brown and crisp and get all yummy. All right, we got hot bread. It's hot. Fucking A. Oh my God. So you can see that the shrimp shells are turning pink on the undersides. That's what happens when you cook shrimp. What we're really looking for is some browning of the shell. So there's a little bit there. Could go further. You're really gonna get most of your color on one side of the shrimp, and then you'll flip them and they'll cook for like a, a minute or so, maybe 30 seconds on the second side. But best to try and establish as much flavor and caramelization on one side so that it doesn't overcook. It smells shrimpy. Okay, we're looking great. We are flipping. We've got nice color. The, look at that one, woo! They're crispy. The shells are like curling up, which means they're crispy. We're gonna kiss them on their other side for just a second. And then pretty quickly here, I'm taking them out and throwing them on a plate. I really, really don't want these to overcook. Like to me, there's nothing worse than an overcooked shrimp. It will finish cooking as it sits. That's a beautiful one. And now we're going to add the remaining butter. The 20 cloves of sliced garlic and the lemons all at once and just 
reduce the heat to low because we're not trying to brown this garlic. We're just trying to saute it in the butter and we're just gonna saute all of this together for a couple of minutes here. And you'll wanna remove it from the heat before they start to really brown at the edges because that will taste bitter. Do a little shimmy shake. Mm. So we're cooking off the rawness of the garlic and just mellowing it out here. You definitely want to spend a couple of minutes doing this because we just put 20 cloves of garlic in the skillet. If they were to remain raw, it would be pretty intense. And just take them to the point where they're not quite brown but soft. Okay, at this point, I'm going to add a buttload of black pepper. It should be as much black pepper as you put into like a cacio e pepe, for example, which is a pasta dish that's comprised of cheese and pepper and sometimes butter. And it's cheese is fatty and pepper is spicy and together they really balance each other out. Same thing's happening here. Eight tablespoons of butter, you need a lot of pepper. And we're toasting the pepper in the butter, which is like really bringing all of its flavor and heat out. So the lemons are getting kind of jammy now. You can see they're like cooking into the sauce. Hmm. So now's a great time to add your beans, your green beans right into the skillet. And then I'm gonna remove it from the heat now because we're not cooking these beans. They're already cooked. They were cooked before they were put in the can. And really you just want them to soak up the butter and soak up the flavor of the lemon and the garlic and the black pepper. So just letting them kind of like mingle in the skillet in the residual heat for a couple of minutes. They'll warm through that way. And then I'm gonna throw these back in. And we're just kind of tossing this all together. And now we just take the remaining half of a lemon, which we did not caramelize, and squeeze it all over. And that's gonna brighten it all up, cut through some of the fat. All right, now we got our saucy beans, garlic, shrimp, lots of butter. I think we serve it right on the skillet, frankly. Oh my god, oh my god. I literally can't get a break today. I got lemon in my eyes. Okay guys, I am ready for you. So I'm going for a non-poop. A poopless shrimp. Beans are fucking good. Can't taste the poop, that's because it's not there. Which one do you have? Poop in? Or a poop out. Poop in or poop out. <laughs> My palate is not refined enough to taste the poop. Mm. This one is better. <laughs> we fuck with the poop. The poop gives it a little flavor. Or... It gives or it a little just, funk. Maybe just the... Because the back ridge is like holding in more juice. Mm -hmm. Is this the best part of the... The tail? Or just the tail? Oh, the tail, yeah. It's like the oyster that. of the chicken, kind of. Yeah. Bottom go. line, eat that poop. Poop in. I guess I'd poop in that video 17 times. Yeah. Window shrimp. Should last I give them poopy or poopless? Last video, like one of the other videos. What kind of shrimp is that? Uh, shrimp poop. with 20 cloves of garlic. Poopy. This has poop in. What? <laughs> <laughs> poop in? <laughs> no, don't worry, it's good. No, no. <laughs> Oh no. Oh god. I'll finish it. 